okay, well, let's start with the businessy parts of the meeting um, since we do have a quorum. So uh, I'd like to call us to order at 7.04. And may I ask you, Don, to be our minute taker? Great, thank you. So Don will take minutes for us. And I don't know that there's anybody who's not usually with us, um, but I'll offer up the opportunity for public comment. Okay, so hearing none, um, the first order of business for board members is to approve the minutes from our May 12th meeting. So if I could get a motion from Rob or Andrew or now um, Liz, who's just joined us, that would be great. So moved, Rob Backlund. Okay, thank you, Rob. And a second. A second from Andrew, great. Okay, so let's just start with talking about um, the town hall, the town hall presentation that we discussed. Hey, John, do you mind, or John, anybody who's joining, or anybody who's viewed, that would be great, and then we won't have an echo, an echo. Krista, you didn't vote for that motion. Oh, I'm sorry. So, all in favor of approving the minutes from May 12th, please say aye, or wave aye. your hand. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, thank you, Don, so the minutes are approved. All right, so we'll just take a little bit of time first to talk about um, the first sort of new idea we discussed at our last meeting, which was the idea of having outreach from our administration around um, kind of recapping the year, what summer might look like, um, and some thoughts about the fall. So if I could, Patrick, um, ask you to just share a little bit about where that's out at, that would be great. Oh, I think you need to, hold on a second, you're muted. Sorry about that. There you go. Um, so just, I, I kind of sketched out today, um, kind of some, some broad talking points and identified some folks that might speak to those talking points because we had talked about the importance of multiple voices being heard, people wanting to hear from building leaders as well as district leaders. And we, we discussed it a little bit at last night's board meeting and the, the board felt that a, a board um, sort of presence or voice in that town hall would be important as well to sort of round out the sort of leadership of MAUSD a little more completely. Um, in sending that message. So I can I can share my screen and just kind of show you the draft kind of outline of what that would look like, if that's helpful. That would be great, thank you. Oh, I do I need to give you that permission probably? Yep, I think so. Okay, uh, la la la. Um, I think I'm just gonna make you the host, Patrick, because that might be the easiest way okay. for you to share your screen. Okay, now you have the super pet. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so this is, a, this is a draft, again, I just sent it out this afternoon. Um, so I sent it to administrators and to the board to kind of get some eyes on it and um, share any feedback they might have over the next couple of days so that we can kind of flesh it out a bit next week and then hopefully record it on the 9th and send it out on the 10th. I thought, I thought timing it to go out on the last day of school seemed to make sense. Um, you know, as we, as we bring the school year for students to a close, that seemed like an appropriate time to sort of launch describes a little bit of a reflection on this past spring, but also a little bit about the summer and a little bit about the fall. So um, even with really brief periods of time here allocated for each thing. This ended up being right now looking at about 16 minutes, which is pretty long in terms of the ability folks will have to sort of sit through the entire thing. So that's a little bit of a concern for me, but I'm not sure what I would take out yet. And that may come out in the feedback. But thinking about starting it with just an opening and, and kind of leading in with a message, you know, Don and I can talk about how to tag team this, but a message basically saying like we had mentioned before, 
that really what we're trying to convey is we're here for you, we're on this, and we're gonna make sure that kids are taken care of. Um, and so that's kind of the stage I'm, I'm imagining setting in, in some opening remarks. And then not all board members will have sort of a, a part that they'll be speaking to, but I think it's important for people as we're looking at this recording to, um, to have a chance to say who they are, uh, what their role is, and kind of have people put a name and a face together. So to give board members that chance to introduce themselves um, at the beginning, and then others who are listed below here would introduce themselves when, when they get to the part where they're gonna speak. Um, so then really just, just thinking about sharing a little bit about what has happened this spring, uh, some takeaways, um, kind of reflecting a little bit there, and then transitioning into some thoughts about summer and pretty specifically meals. Did we lose you, Patrick? Does anyone else not hear Patrick? I don't hear him, but maybe he's thinking. <laughs> no, I can't hear him either. Okay, hang on. We lost you, Patrick. Hopefully he'll come back to us. You guys can all hear me? Yes. Okay. I don't know if I have the power to scroll through to see what else is on here, but oh. Oh. there you go. Okay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Internet connectivity. Let me get my screen share going again. So at least from what I think I was talking, I was just starting to talk about the fall when I disappeared on you. Is that, does that seem accurate? Okay. So really then jumping into the fall being probably the thing that people are most interested in and curious about and reinforcing that there's still a lot of unknown. And we had talked in our last meeting that that's, uh, that that's important and valuable for the community to hear that we, we don't have it all figured out yet. We don't have all the information we need. Um, and nevertheless, we're going to begin thinking about and planning for what the fall might bring. Um, and so then I have different folks that I've kind of assigned, uh, at least at this point in time, to talk about these talking points. So really thinking about kind of the two scenarios we're playing out, which is um, either face-to-face -face or a hybrid of face-to-face -face and remote. Um, reinforcing that safety is a priority. Also reinforcing that the social and emotional learning is a high priority. And then we're gonna really pare down on the, the concepts and skills and focus on what is most essential. Uh, that's something that's happening now and I think we're gonna need to continue that into the fall. Again, reinforcing the, that we are aware of what will likely be an increased need that students are gonna be bringing in the fall. There's, typically there's a um, sort of a decline um, as students enter the fall from a summer out of school. We're gonna see that, I think, exacerbated uh, when, when we come back in the fall in whatever shape we're coming back in. So for people to know that we're thinking about that and are gonna have plans in place to help meet student needs, I thought was important. Transportation is something that surfaces pretty regularly, especially as um, guidelines around what's appropriate for transportation begin to circulate. <clears throat> so I thought it would be important for people to know that we're, we're thinking about that and planning for that as well. Just the general cleanliness of the building, uh, what's happening with ELP and after school care, especially in light of some changes with Mary Johnson and um, not lo no longer providing after school care next year. A lot of people still have questions about that. So to try and reiterate again that, that ELP is expanding and we'll be covering those, those needs that are vacated by Mary Johnson programming. And then, um, and then the finances, you know, that's something that <clears throat> has gotten some media attention and will continue to get media attention. So just to share a little bit kind of high level stuff about what we know, what we're doing now and what we plan to do in the future to address some of those financial um, components. And then kind of bringing it full circle again with some closing, with some closing remarks, just reinforcing the, it's complicated. We don't know everything, but we're working on it and we're gonna be here and we're gonna take care of, of students throughout this. That's the, the really brief overview of this um, 
sort of outline of what I'm thinking about for the town hall. So Patrick, um, I don't know when you're in share screen mode if I can see all of the participants, but I'm wondering if we could, oh, there we go. Um, if folks want to um, ask Patrick any questions about that or have any comments about that, then now I can see everybody and I can just, if you want to wave or raise your virtual hand, I can call on you. Go ahead, Mary. Um, what happens? You gotta unmute. Think, oh, right. I thought I was on. I'm on. Nope. Nope. You're good. Okay. Um, what happens with the lunches in the summer? With the buses and delivery of the meals and da da da. Yeah. So delivery is going to stop on June twelfth, uh, and won't resume until in the fall when school resumes. So either, either school is going to be in session in person. And obviously kids will get their, their meals in the building as they, as they used to. I can't even say as they typically would. I don't know what typical is anymore. So, but as they used to at one point in time. Um, or if school is either hybrid or remote, we're going to be figuring out the delivery again. But there's nothing in the summer. Summer, it's pickup only. So we do have a pickup location or pickup locations. Um, and food will be available. So it's, it's the, same, the same eligibility requirements are in place and that it's to any um, children 18 and under uh, or maybe it's under 18 and it's just that we won't be delivering and we've also Kathy did send a message out to families saying if you simply can't get to a pickup location to contact her and we'll figure some way to make sure that you get food because we definitely acknowledge the food need is going to be there still in the summer um, it's just that the, it's cost prohibitive to contract with buses to deliver um, in the summertime. And then the additional staff that we need to be on the buses as well um, is a cost that becomes prohibitive. And I would just add that I think um, the good news is that we, we've been doing the summer meals program for a while now and people kind of are pretty aware of it and how it works. So it's not new for folks that there are those sites around the five towns where you can go get your meals um, and people take, you know, pretty good advantage of that, I think. So hopefully that will, you know, they'll continue to do that. And we anticipate about a hundred kids in our ELP program for the summer. And that happens at Mount Abe, which is one of the, which is the site where the food is prepared. So there's already a really good relationship uh, between our food service program and that summer meals program specifically and our ELP programming. So, so those kids will all have access to that really easily. Go ahead, Nancy. I think you, the agenda you've got here really covers a lot of important ground that, um, that lots of people are going to, I mean, it covers a lot of the topics that people are wondering about. So that's great. And um, the one thing I think that will help people accept both what is what you're saying in uh, what folks are saying in this um, agenda and and what you'll be saying later, um, I think it will help people to know, and you may already, you're probably already planning on this, but I just wanted to check on it. I think people, it'll help people to know what is gonna be guiding the decisions you make in terms of advice. Is it gonna be the, the Vermont Secretary of Education? Is it gonna be the governor of Vermont? Is it gonna be the CDC? What what are you going to be going by to make the decisions you'll be making? So the answer to that is yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's really a combination of all of those things. Um, and, and they're all interrelated. Yep. Really what it boils down to is the, the guidance we're going to get from the state. And when I say state, that could be agency of ed, governor's office, or, or the Vermont Department of Health. Um, it's really going to be the public health data that's driving the guidance that they give us, which drives what we do. The trick really comes down to timing. And that's part of what we're trying to figure out right now. You know, yeah. the, the public health data in August 
is going to look different likely than the public health data does today. So I'm sure from a state level, they'd like to wait until August to give guidance. From a practical perspective, trying to get everything ready for school to start, middle of August is way, 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 way too late to have that kind of planning time uh, to get that done. So we are, we're trying to figure that out. We're working together regionally and statewide as superintendents to, to try to get some clarity and, and try to advocate for what we need um, in terms of timing and information. So I'm optimistic that we're going to figure something out that gives us time to plan uh, accordingly. Right now, we're really planning on, on just a couple of contingencies. So it, it's likely to be, I don't think it's going to be exclusively remote. I think our, our public health information is going to have to take a pretty dramatic turn for the worse for us to be exclusively remote in the fall. I also recognize the, the economic impact schools being in session. Um, has. If, if kids don't have a place to go, it's going to be really hard for the economy to get back up and running. So I think that's going to be a pressure that's also going to be realized and, and is going to um, influence at least some amount of in-person, especially for our youngest kids. Um, so all those things are telling me that it's probably going to be some combination of face-to-face -face time and remote time and likely not exclusively remote. Having so said that, if we plan for face-to-face -to -face in a hybrid and it ends up being exclusively remote, we'll be in good position to, to make that happen as well. So just um, including that information about what, what are the sources that are guiding you, whatever they're going to be, I think will help people because people are getting very conflicted information on the news, as you know. Another piece that I just wonder about is whether there's room, and there may not be, to say a little bit um, ab about what the, your plans are with the staff between June 10th, the 16th or 17th, so people get a bit of a picture of the kinds of things you're going to be working on to prepare for the fall. I mean, I think that a bit of information about that will be comforting to people. Yeah, I had that on initially. Um in the reflecting on the spring. And I ended up taking it out in part because the, the video was starting to get quite long. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's an easy piece to put in. You yeah. know, you have if there's five room. days at the end of the year that we've never really had in the past that is specifically for reflecting on the spring, um, a little bit of sort of um, social and emotional needs that adults have, and some regrouping and starting to wrap our heads around the fall even with all the unknowns. So I can definitely put that back in. Looks great, Patrick. Go ahead, Darla. Hi, um, I just wanted to um, give a little point of reference for um, one of my jobs is working with Building Bright Futures, which um, has to do with early education. And the guidance that's been coming down for, for early ed, and Patrick, you know some of this because of the essential care that you guys are doing. It's been changing from week to week, if not almost day to day. Information comes out in the middle of the night. Um, it's, it's tricky. I don't envy you, Patrick, trying to look into that crystal ball to see what you can do for September. But um, it may be that you don't have all the information until you know, the governor made an announcement two weeks ago that childcare would open up with never talking to childcare providers. So, you know, they're looking at opening up on June 1st. Some of them don't have, you know, PPE. They don't have cleaning supplies. They don't have a plan in place. They don't know how much staff is coming back. Um, just to know that, that that information that's coming from Montpelier is ever changing. Um, and so I, I take my hat off to you and I don't know how you'll plan, but God bless you for all the contingency plans that you've got. Um, the other thing That's I the wanted trick, to- right? you, got, you have to plan for everything when-, when ex for, yeah. Exactly, exactly. The other thing I wanted to offer is that um, I've been listening into the uh, pediatricians throughout the state of Vermont have a call um, every day at noon, and I've been listening into those a couple of days a week. And um, Brina Holmes, who's the maternal child health um, director for the state, has been talking recently about face masks in kids and how that those are going to be in though that's our our best line of defense it's a respiratory virus um what's the plan patrick for school and face masks 
so the plan is to develop a plan, um, but we recognize that there's need for face masks. So we, we have right now in our possession about 2,500 face masks. Uh, we're ordering more. They're, they're the, the thinner, sort of the blue, almost surgical looking kind of masks. They're not the N95s or anything like that. Um, they're, they're a face covering, essentially. Um, and, you know, we may need to think about students either wanting or perhaps requesting for students to bring their own and have that be their mask that they take care of. Um, so probably some combination of the two. We're also, in addition to that, we even talked some about it today, you know, thinking about a speech language pathologist working with a, with a student who the student can't have a mask on while they're doing that work and they need, they need work on articulation or whatever it might be. Um, I just talked with our facilities folks today about constructing some plexiglass sort of shields so that in those kinds of scenarios, uh, a staff member can work across a desk from a student and have the kind of interactions they need to have to, to meet that student's needs, but also keep people safe. So just sort of variations on, on that theme of how to enable us to go about our day to day and make sure that we're positioned to meet kids' needs while keeping everyone's you know, health and safety as a number one priority. Had a question for the group, um, but before I pose it, I'm just wondering if anyone else has anything to add on what Patrick shared so far. So I guess, I, oh, go ahead, Rob. I guess I could also just email this to Patrick, but I don't, I don't think it's necessary that maybe all board members uh, say who they are. Um, I don't have an ego where I need to have my face on a, on a screen. I don't really look that flattering anyway on Zoom. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, just to keep it simple and to really open up the channels for folks to follow up. Um, this, you know, I think there'll be a lot of, there's a lot of talking points there and there's gonna open up a lot of cans of worms, I'm sure for people, especially probably the people that will watch it are probably the people that tend to reach out the most and ask the most questions and so, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, to really front load and back load uh, every which way you can so that people feel like they're not just hanging on a cliff on June 10th, not knowing, you know, and granted, like you said, there's so many unknowns, but that they can at least make a phone call or send an email, um, whether it be to you or, you know, the, the, the school principal, um, whoever it may be. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's important, you know, I'm not a parent of a child at the school. Um, I'm just a community member, but I think it's important that parents see people that they know versus maybe like, I don't know who that guy in that log cabin is. I want to hear from her. I want to hear from him. So uh, that'd just be my thought. Maybe Don speaks for the board and, uh, and then that might free up a little more time to maybe add a few nuts and bolts from, from those folks that people want to really hear from at the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my only thinking with the board members introducing themselves was, you know, if I'm a Lincoln resident and I have a question that I think is appropriate for a board member, for them to, to see your face and hear you say, I'm Rob and I'm a Lincoln representative on the MAUSD board, might give them a point of contact that they feel comfortable reaching out to. Um, but I don't, I don't have really strong feelings about it either way. I mean, in elected position, in all honesty, that's more, I think, my role. <laughs> but. Yeah, I think, Rob, you brought up what I was going to pose to the group, which is that this is um, a great way to share information and I think we we should be aware of the fact that it will probably generate questions um, and interest maybe in some sort of follow-up so I know we we kind of bandied some of different ideas around last time um, it might be as simple as if you have a question about X here's who you contact and I know a lot of that messaging has already been going out it's been great for people to hear different voices on the calls about you know whether it's food or support services and here's who you contact um but that we might just want to think about you know uh 
how we can facilitate people being able to reach out and get information they need or probably maybe even more likely is alleviating you know anxieties or concerns so i don't know if anybody has thoughts about that kind of after we do this then what Yeah, go ahead. Feel free to just unmute yourself unless we all start talking over each other. I don't need to police it. Um, people are going to be upset. And, um, but I think it's really, I think there, I think there's going to be a lot of that. But I do think that um, if you're reassuring people that you're going to be providing information in an ongoing way as soon as you know more that's all you can do that's all you can do i mean so and i and i think i wonder if there's um a piece at the end even a what is it what what would be in the credits <laughs> that just lists the, the names of the board members and how to contact them, but and the principals and how to contact them, and you and how to contact you. I mean, that's that's the best you can do, really. And I think I, I think Rob's right that um, because of the time crunch, it may not make it may make more sense for Dawn to represent the board rather than, and you can list the board other board members' names and contacts at the end. I think that um, one of the, when I think about the goal of this town hall presentation um, in the bigger scheme of reaching people in addition to those who have kids in the school, but also community members, you know, I always think about that big contingent of people that are interested in what's going on in the school, but not connected to the school because they don't have kids there. Um, having having a local person even maybe just one board member from each town i, I think it's i think it's it, and it can be short and, and brief but it just sort of makes us all a community and it's not sort of this top down thing it's more of a it's more a collection of people in all five towns that are working together to um navigate through all this so I would say I, I I would say I I like the way Patrick laid it out initially and in having um, a few people maybe one person from each town introduce themselves um, and uh, and say if you have any questions if you're from New Haven give me a call or you know reach out my information's on the website or um, because when we build this this is you're going to do this again right. We we talked about this being an ongoing thing. Um, Some form of it, yeah. I think as information continues to unfold, so that we can sort of build this place that people can rely on for information. And if they're interested, even if they don't have kids, they want to know what's going on with the schools. They want to know what's happening. This is a place that they know they can look forward to finding out more. Um, and again, just making that community connection and having having some local people that they might recognize from town or wherever um, I think might be important. Yeah, I'll jump on that to say that I think in, unless the board member participation really slows down the process for the sake of expediency, I think it might be useful just because of, uh, you know, sort of the historical issues around people feeling like the board doesn't listen and, and they come to the meetings and they can't participate and they can't give their input. And, and uh, I just sort of think that it helps provide a, you know, we're all in this together. We're all trying to get through this together. We all have a voice in this. Um, and again, it may, it may be well represented by just Don, but maybe, not even one person from each town, but we have 
I'll do it. And we got someone from Lincoln and we get someone from Bristol. And maybe that's good enough for right now. And we rotate them if we do future videos, but. And I, and I, the oh, other thing ahead. I was going to say is, is that I think when we get to the whole facilities conversation, um, we, you know, we're, we're trying to create community as we go. And I think a lot of the initiatives that have happened um, in the last six months to eight months have been really helpful in that regard. And I think that this kind of an opportunity is important. Um, when we get, when we figure out what school is going to look like and we get to the fall and then we have this urgent need to start talking about facilities and, and engaging our community in that conversation and in that direction, that um, knowing that people know who the players are, people know who, um, where to find information and they can look forward to getting that information on an ongoing basis. So again, just kind of thinking long term um, about what this can be ultimately and not just um, not just to provide information about where we are now and what school is going to look like in the fall but that we're building we are building community Patrick I was wondering if you could um, provide an update on the website revamp that you shared at the board meeting because I was thinking that um, you know, like uh, as seeing in the chat about, um, you know, having some FAQs, which I know we did that for the fall engagement work. And, um, you know, I was, I'm just wondering, I know it's um, going to be primarily student centric, which is as it should be, but I'm also wondering how, how you think there'll be space for um, sharing these kinds of things as they're, as they become known or if there are frequent questions that people have that we can post answers to, so we can feel confident, you know, directing people like this is where you go for the most up to date info as we know it. Yeah, so we're I'm trying to pull up a pull something up to see if I can give you a kind of a sneak peek of the the new format. But the we should have um, before the next board meeting, which may not necessarily. The timing may not work out great for our launch of this uh, um, June 10th video, possibly, um, but, but we're going to have a new website that is very student centric, lots of pictures of kids doing wonderful things in schools and, and outside of school buildings. Um, and it's going to be linked to uh, very easily linked to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, like all those places that information may exist. So we're also going to have there's a very prominent place for news stories and calendars of events so it's a uh, it's going to be it's going to have all the same information that we have on our current website only with uh, a lot of links to other information and be a much better place like as a one-stop shop for information that's out there in a lot of different places so it may be something that we can point people to with a little more assurance that they're going to be able to make it well um, and see the information that we're looking for So, and I actually made a note a few minutes ago as I was watching the chat about the FAQs idea. And I'm not exactly sure where that would fit best on the website. Is that a, a story that stays updated? Is it a link somewhere? Um, I'd have to go back and look at that new format to see where that would make the most sense. But to put it in a place that people would, would think to go to, um, to be able to find that. Because, you know, as Darla's point in the, in the notes here in the, in the chat, information is going to continue to evolve. So um, we're going to need a place to continue to, to provide updates on what's going on. Um, and the other challenge with that being, because information is going to continually evolve, we're going to be in a constant state of planning and refining and changing, um, which takes a lot of time, which makes it hard to invest time in keeping everybody up to date and everything that's going on. So we'll have to walk that line um, between communication and, and making sure that we're getting the work done. Um, but we'll just have to figure out how to do that. Patrick, is the site um, updated in live now or is that something you're gonna launch soon? No, it's something we're, we're going to launch soon. We've been working on it for several months. Um, we're gonna launch the district first 
And then schools, each school will have a new website as well that will follow the same sort of formatting so that if they have children in multiple schools or if they're trying to, you know, go between the district site and a school site that they'll find the same kind of information in the same kind of places so that they'll be able to navigate it a little more easily. Um, so that's all underway. I was trying to find a, it, it would be a still, but it would at least give you a sense of what it would look like. Um, I can still keep kind of poking around to see if I can find that and share it with you. It'd be easier than trying to describe what it would look like. Would it be worthwhile for you at the end to say, and we'll touch base in two, like every two weeks or every three, like just to give a ballpark so people can hold their wonderings until that moment? Um, yeah, I certainly, I certainly appreciate the desire for that on the receiving end. I don't want to make promises I don't feel like I can uphold on the mm -hmm. delivery end, though. Then it's that, that challenge every two weeks. Or three weeks. Uh, when it is but just to, that way people know they can like be like oh okay all right we'll know more in the middle of july or whatever you think is doable and it doesn't have to be a huge formal video either this one you know because it's the first one i guess but it could just be you know just i don't know just a quick update if there is no information or whatever but i think you're frozen again We've lost him for a bit. I was going to look up my calendar to see. So June 10, um, gosh, just thinking when we're meeting again after that, but maybe we can, um, you know, see if we have any sense of how that was received as after it's gone out and what a good thought might be. Um, you know, because I agree that so, even if it's a pretty low key, like, you know, midsummer, like, okay, here's how it's been going over the summer. And then, okay, we're about, or, you know, early summer or whatever it is, like, you know, summer, fall. Um, you back with us? I'm back. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was just saying, Patrick, that um, uh, I was, I was, trying to get my calendar to pull up to see when our next meeting is after June 10th. But, you know, it might be interesting to see what, what if any kind of response we hear like in the ether to that going out and what maybe makes sense after that to do again. But, but, a, but uh, a, a reaching out to the community, you know, at some point in the late summer or, or, you know, maybe midsummer and then before the school year, you know, it might not be a bad idea and we can talk about it at the board with the full board as well, but. Um, and maybe there's somebody else who you, you can ask, maybe the school principals or something like that so you don't have to put it on your plate. Like maybe it's just a different contact person. I don't know. You know, like then you can just, you know, I mean, seeing you at the, you know, at the first one makes sense, da, 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 but if that's just one more thing you have to figure out in your head to like, oh gosh, I gotta do that whole thing. You know, maybe there's just someone you could delegate that to. Just, I think the, I think, I just love that, like we talked about, I love the governor talks three times a week. It's like, okay, you never have to worry about anything because he'll address it in two days, you know? Yep. So, but I can see where it's just one more thing on your plate. So if there's someone else, like maybe rotating it with the school principals or something, or I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely something we can, we can think about. Is, is this going to get mailed to everybody in the district, a link to the video, or is it going to be on social media? How is it going to get distributed, all of the above? Well, that's part of the concern with the length. Um, you know, at 16 minutes-ish, if it ends up being that long. Like, I, I don't know, like you can't do an Instagram video for 16 minutes, probably. I wonder about even a Facebook video for 16 minutes. Um, so those, those are things that I don't have a great answer for basically anywhere we can put it that the length of video will be conducive to the, the platform, uh, for sure. A link from the website, we can probably put a link out in front porch forum that sends it back to the website to get to the video. Like, I mean, that's certainly something we can do in Twitter and 
um, Instagram, et cetera, we can link people back to the, the website where the video is. So um, we'll have to play around with whatever options make the most sense to get it out to the broadest audience. So um, maybe let's move on to the next piece if everybody feels pretty well up to date on this for now. Um, but if other thoughts come up, we can revisit as we move on. I'm just trying to reduce my screen again to get to my agenda. Um, so I think next is to talk about this community roundtable idea. And at our board meeting, Tonight, Patrick, we talked a little bit about um, the idea that we might be separating students out a little bit more physically, for example, because of the need. Can you guys hear me okay? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Uh, how about now? Sounds okay. Yes. You cut, you cut in okay. and out a little bit. Yeah. Am I still cutting in and out? Okay. So um, anyway, with, you know, Patrick was sharing about how we might be spreading out more because of the need for more space for our physical distancing of students. And we talked a little bit about, oh, what spaces might there be in our community, um, you know, to provide additional space. And this is just an example that reminds me of this idea of the need to pull together community leaders um, as we face these different challenges that are coronavirus related, but even beyond that, you know, economics and um, town sustainability and all of those parts and pieces. So, um, and I wondered uh, how much of that is feeling urgent, like it would really be great to have those conversations um starting now in other words we could spend a lot of time imagining how to set something like that up and have it be really rich and productive and that is valuable but also are there things that it would be great to get some thought leaders together on now and i'm that's a question i guess for you patrick and then to follow up on that um well, I guess I'll just start with that <laughs> as a starting point, because this is an idea that I think has great merit. Um, and it's just uh, a matter of, is this something we just try to go for and see how it goes? Because there's some questions to be answered right now that we could really use some other voices at the table, or do we ponder the best approach? So that's my thinking. And I just love your all, all of your feedback. I think in terms of pursuing space needs, I think we we're working to figure out if that's if that's a real thing, if that's an actual need first. Um, and then once we have clarity on what the need really is, I feel like we're well positioned to reach out to, you know, folks at the town of Bristol if we think Holly Hall might offer something or Howden Hall or the Lincoln Library. Like I feel like they're, I mean, it's a relatively finite list of possibilities in terms of where space could be found. Um, and I feel like pretty clear points of contact to reach out about utilizing that space once we have an understanding of what the need is. So I, I feel good about being able to sort of navigate those connections throughout the five towns. I almost think the, the energy of pulling together the, the you know, community leaders, et cetera, around a, a bigger, more complex topic may be the better place to invest the time from at least from my I opinion. guess just to clarify I was just using that as an example in terms of like are these conversations that uh, should be happening right now um, even nation conversation even conversations that are not fully fleshed, so that various folks grappling with various issues kind of understand better um, you know, how that relates to other things happening in the community. So I apologize, Krista, I didn't hear a word you said. I was frozen the whole time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was saying, Patrick, that I was using the um, 
space idea is an example that, um, but it could be really anything. I guess I'm just wondering, uh, is there, you know, there's so many different things that could emerge or are emerging, but regardless, is it, is it a good idea to, to start getting people together now, just to start some conversations and hear where different community groups are at so that there's sharing of knowledge and information and also when it comes time to problem solve, those folks are already at the table or does that feel too, um, too much to tackle right now? I guess from my perspective, the, the sort of ambiguity of it would be challenging because um, we'd be getting together to without clarity of what we're trying to solve. Um, and it does feel like that might, might be complicated to sort of, sort of manage that and manage the variety of groups that, that we're trying to sort of navigate and keep abreast of things and work with to solve problems. So I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that. It's interesting that you bring that up, Krista. I was at the select board meeting last night, I was thinking at some point we need to invite this group or Patrick or someone to come to the select board and start talking about, we, you know, we talked about that at the community meetings, making those connections um, in different spaces, you know, with different um, leaders, if you will, in different communities. So I'd be happy, Patrick, to bat around some ideas or help host a, a if you wanted to do a Zoom of the five town community select boards or something like that. Um, I think it would just be a great way to check in and start that partnership and have have more communication between town leaders and, and school leaders. Yeah, I think, you know, as an informational q and I, I think that's a fine idea. I, I love the idea of bringing all five towns together so we're not, you know, repeating it five times over. Um, and that way we can all have the same information and, and, and hear the same questions. So yeah, I, I would be fine with that. I don't want to make more work for you. I don't want to add more to your plate, but I know that's something that we have talked about in those meetings. No, I, don't, I, I think that would be fine. I don't feel like that adds a lot of work. I mean, it's going to be, it'll be whatever the, the length of the meeting is that there wouldn't necessarily be a lot of prep for that that is different from the prep we have to do anyway as we're responding to the guidance coming in and developing plans and things. It's really just sort of an update of where are we at that point in time. Um, and it's a great way to, to get more information out there in the community um, that is factual and, and builds relationships, which I think is important. I'm seeing that Nance um, just put a question up there, which I'm wondering as well, like if we could just go over what the goal of, if it's, is it to solve one thing, like one huge idea, we got to figure this out, let's bring everybody to the table, or is it just to get us all on the same page, the school being one spoke of the whole, so you're not responsible for it, Patrick, it's more like we're just I don't know, in the age of Zoom, I feel like I'm on a million of those where it's like, let's just all figure out where we're all at, you know? But what's the goal? What were we thinking the goal was? Sorry. We, we had the, you know, the topic that seemed to be gaining some traction was the idea of broadband connectivity as something that was very multifaceted and complex that had, you know, far reaching benefits and challenges. Um, and obviously had involved the school, but was, by no means exclusively the school and really had a had a significant community impact in terms of potential draw to the area and and all the things that come about with that and to me that much as people i'm sure love to hear me talk that's much more engaging and interesting to come together about around a really sort of meaty complex um, topic that has some concrete um, aspects to it that feels like maybe we can we can achieve something. I don't know that that still sounds to me like like something that is exciting and and potentially unifying um, for the same group of people, and and really thick engagement um, versus thin engagement. I was reading I were... today about um, 
I guess it was in the New York Times, maybe. Or was it Vermont Digger? I, oh, what's the diff? Um, about people from outside of Vermont um, trying to uh, buy Vermont properties online. Um, people not just from New York, but from Florida and other places. And um, I, uh, I, I think there are lots of reasons why, as there are many, there's a, always been good reasons why people, families would wanna move to our school district. And now there are some more reasons why they might want to. And the broadband piece um, is, is in part a key to that, not because it's the key to remote schooling, but because it's a key to enabling businesses and jobs to um, to be to, to be available here and so a key to families being able to move here I've also been um, I, it, I'm wondering whether this uh, roundtable whether it's better to focus on on internet connection uh, as it, it, you know, as the very specific focus, or whether it's better to talk about, to focus on something broader that includes like increasing enrollment and attracting families that, that includes broadband and then maybe breaking off into separate um, work groups. I mean, I, there's a whole piece for real estate agents. There's a, there, um, the, the broadband issue is also huge. I, I, I discovered that uh, when most, um, when the media around here talks about broadband, they're talking about something along the lines of eight megabits per second. Um, that's not very fast. Um, and I wouldn't call that, a, uh, a worthy goal. Anyway, I've also been hearing that um, there's a great, that the state tends to think about laying cable, but that it's possible that satellite internet is really the solution that we should be striving. So there are all kinds of issues related to broadband and related to increasing in enrollment and attracting families. I, I'm really interested in, in putting minds together on the specific piece or the larger piece, but I think that the, the iron is hot and um, we could really get somewhere. And, and in relation to broadband, there's, there's money. I mean, people in the Northeast Kingdom need it way more than we do, but we need it too. I mean, the people who don't have it need it. So as I recall, the context to this conversation was, how do we engage community leader, leaders who have uh, access or power to make changes in the system that are outside of us that we can't do anything about as a board or at the school districts to increase enrollment, right? So at the school district, we're having to deal with, the, the board is having to deal with declining enrollment, right? And, and how that affects the budget. but how do we increase enrollment? So I'm wondering if the question we initially uh, move out with is, how do we increase enrollment? And maybe that's through broadband, maybe we've got issues with zoning regulations in various towns that uh, prohibit uh, small business incubators who wanna start up. Maybe we have an affordable housing uh, crunch. Uh, and, and maybe there's five other things that folks outside of our sphere come up with that none of us have thought about and then maybe we have some actionable items out of that to pursue. Yeah, I like that, Andrew. I guess I would then say, can we just frame it as how can we be a stronger community? And then the in, people will come once we create a stronger community, almost just to, I don't know, just to be mindful of the people that are already here, and how could we better serve the people that are here? Mm -hmm. I don't know, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would just caution us to make it feel too big because people will disengage immediately. Um, 
there has to be something that that is almost tangible that people feel like they can kind of get their arms around and and we can figure this out in in, in a pretty concrete way um and so that was my initial reaction to how can we be a better community was i don't know what that means and the ambiguity scares me so i guess i'll do something else with my time versus how can we attract families to our region our area oh boy i wonder and and that to me loops in broadband zoning regs business community all those things and really if we think of it from an essential question perspective that is the essential question right so um, when this initiated when we started these conversations how can we bring families to our five town area so i was just going to share that um i i originally brought the idea because i had seen an article in the addison independent that was talking about virgins having these regular maybe it was weekly but at the start of the pandemic they were having these regular convenings of some different town leaders talking about how things were going on their various fronts and sort of trying to open up communication which would then lead to more collaboration as everybody's trying to problem solve how to deal with this particular issue and it it resonated with me because i always i i thought that that makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons our particular challenges as a school district being a really good example um and so i i just i wonder if there's appetite for bringing people together to just start with the what are the biggest challenges you're seeing in your particular slice of the community that you are responsible for um clearly patrick your responsibility and the thing you spend way more than 40 hours a week on is the running of our school district um so that's got to be your number one goal but in the problem solving of that and hearing what other people are grappling with there could be some solutions that emerge that benefit everybody um And so right now it might be declining enrollment, but five years from now it might be something else. Um, so I, I, I guess I have a bias toward framing this too narrowly around something really specific that might um, not resonate with every part of our community, but I also recognize that we are a board committee and so that what's happening in the greater community is not necessarily our number one concern. I just feel that involvement at some level just like we're involved at the with the vermont school board association group and patrick you're involved with other superintendents i think there's a a real value to being community steward you know staying staying closely connected with what's happening in other parts of our community i mean we're feeding the community right now you know our school district is feeding the community in a big way so knowing what that looks you know so being in contact with other groups trying to feed other parts of our community there's value there for example uh, anyway that's kind of how the idea came to me but i recognize that that might not fit right now and that might not be a good starting point yeah and i as i think about you know the state context i think the the root of many challenges vermont's experiencing right now which will which are projected to only get worse if we can't figure something out stem from our inability as a state to draw families um so i feel like if we're thinking about it within, within the five town context about drawing families um you know in a way that contributes to something much larger than our specific declining enrollment situation and and the challenges there um you know the I forget it was the was it six three one or something like that the the governor's platform when he ran uh, that we lose six people from the workforce in the state every day, um, you know that's a that's a demographic that that we're feeling right now and um, as that continues if that's if we're I don't know if we're still on that same trajectory I haven't seen updated figures in a while, but that's that's a problem that's very far reaching for industry and for the long term sustainability of Vermont. Uh, 
one yeah, of these, yeah. oh, go ahead, Rob. I'm oh, sorry, Chris, Chris, I thought you, you, your, your, your question, maybe if there's a first meeting, like just, just let people air sort of what their, what their challenges are right now in the, in the current context of things um, to see if there's possibly some overlaps or some, some, we could find some synergy uh, amongst either select boards or wh whoever, um, knowing that there's going to be less resources, money to go around, to maybe try to find some short-term efficiencies uh, where we, we can sort of, in a certain sense, help, help each, each other. Um, that, that just be one of my thoughts and uh, that, that I was thinking about too. Sort of, but I think important to let people say what their challenges are uh, to start, knowing that, like you said, probably the, the end all solution is just hopefully to get more people to move to Vermont and this area too. Um, yeah, that was just my thought. I, I was, um, now it's coming back to me, I, I was picturing that, um, that we would have a focus like attracting new families to the five town area and that we'd be maybe with some breakout topics in mind, inviting specific people. I, I guess I was thinking of it as a think tank. Um, and inviting specific people to the table to help us think about a pretty focused question. If, um, and, see, and, and see what comes of that. I, I hesitate about something that, I mean, I hesitate about uh, convening a group of people to tell each other what's, what their what challenges they're facing because I don't see where it, how that moves us forward. I, my my thought there, Nancy, is to I guess help people break out of their silos. Um, I, I find it's incredible in a small town of even Lincoln that there's such a distinct divide between our select board and the school. Um, I saw one select board member at the community engagement meetings the entire time from the town of Lincoln. And I was just like, I'm a brand new resident. And like, it, it just didn't make sense that there's such a divide. And, and I think maybe the first meeting is to just try to break down some of those walls. And, and, and that's just my thought. Um, maybe it's two different purposes we're talking about. I agree with you. The um, I ran into someone from the planning, from the, either the Starksboro Planning Commission or the, there's another group that makes decisions about, maybe it's a zoning board. And he was flabbergasted that, um, that, it, that when the buildings changed hands in consolidation, the, um, that zoning board was not informed or consulted particularly or anyway. So I think you're right. There's a great need for the different governmental or quasi-governmental parts of our communities to come together and talk to each other. And there, there'd be some great, uh, there'd be some great good, goodwill at the minimum that would come out of that. But I think that's different from, and equally important as, um, the think tank idea. Isn't it, it's kind of the same thing though, right? Because we all have, we'll all, we're all going to try and address probably similar challenges, which is affordable housing. How do, and it's all based on how do we attract people to the area, right? Like I think it would uncover similar stuff, however you frame it, whether it's challenges or, right? how to attract people or challenges. Or I think it's, it's almost the same Well, in the, in the getting the select boards and school boards and- um, And community leaders and not just uh, government governmental, I think. Together, yeah. um, I, I, I think really the, big, the biggest question they need to grapple with is how can we communicate with each other better? How can we, 
I mean, how, how can we work but, together more to solve, to solve a whole range of problems? But that's different from- To Patrick's point, if we had something to work on together, then we're almost modeling it. And what you're saying, like if we have a, something to work on together, then we're right. just doing it by, right. you know? Yeah. How can there be more crossover in the work? Yeah, so I, I think I appreciate that maybe even, you know, just the common goal or, or a few common goals will just foster that cr communication and collaboration. Um, I wonder if we could just take a minute. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm thinking how to, how to move this forward. Um, two questions. One, do we, um, do we try to hone in on what a good carrot would be to get some people together, you know, uh, sometime over the summer um, or, or sooner? Do we start with a carrot of a topic um, and just go for it um, and sort of not overthink it too much and see um, what people are interested in talking about once they show up. People might come for one thing and talk about something else anyway. Um, I lost you. I had two things I was going to ask everybody. <laughs> um, was it to brainstorm who we're thinking? Yes. Well, I think also to go around because not everybody said some things. We haven't really heard much from Sally nice. or um, Sal's or, mic doesn't work. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Okay. So you're using chat. That's great. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm a little bit um, struggling with what, how, how to move this forward, but I do feel like um, I'd love to get folks' pulse on whether or not we should keep mulling this over or we should just go for it. Come up with a list of people to invite. Um, I'd like, I'd like, I think we lost Patrick maybe, but I do want to make sure to connect with Don and Patrick around sort of, you know, keeping in mind our, our board function that that it has to have some connection to what what we're seeking to achieve as a board um so so weaving in that is pretty important um but, but yeah let's just just a quick go around to make sure everybody's had had the chance to say what they'd like to say on this so i see your hand up sally can are you able to communicate Okay, so maybe I'll go with what you're saying on the chat and I can read it aloud. <laughs> Town and community people initiate it and it feels better than the district organizing it. Okay, so, so let's go around. So thanks, Sally. Maybe um, I'm just going to pick on people to, to share on this. Uh, Sorry, Andrew, what are you thinking about good next steps would be for this idea? Well, so my perspective is that if we're going to engage community leaders, we should be specific, uh, like Patrick was mentioning, in order to get people interested. And I think because of this is the community engagement committee, a subcommittee of the board, and the primary or hot button issue is declining enrollment and whether we're going to close schools or not, that this should be organized around how do we increase enrollment. The board only has in its control the ability to set the budget target uh, and think about closing schools and putting that to the taxpayers, but there's lots of things that are outside our control. So let's go to the community and ask how do we bring more folks to town or to our towns. Okay, um, next up is Darla. Um, haven't I talked enough tonight, Zach, Krista? <laughs> um, you can I, pass I, if you want. <laughs> no, um, you know, I really like the idea of getting, um, getting folks together and getting more information out. I mean, that's one of the things that I think is important is having that crossover amongst different groups within the community. Um, I remember when we very, very, very first started talking about facilities at the school, there was a group of uh, people who don't have kids in school and were feeling so disconnected. So how do we bring them into this conversation as well? Um, I think, you know, having um, 
having a particular topic, I think might be a great way to do that. I agree with Andrew having, you know, maybe making it just a little more narrow and talking about how do we bring families into, into the, into our district and how do we, how do we keep them engaged? Maybe it's sort of a double edged sword. Maybe it's two questions instead of one. Um, perhaps that's the way to go. Okay. Patrick, thanks. Sorry, I think I kept you in the waiting room for a little while, but I was trying to move this forward by just giving everybody a chance to say a few words on how we should ne next step. So do we pick a specific topic and invite some folks to convene around that? Um, so everyone's getting, I'm calling on folks to share. And I think Mary, you're up. I'll, I'll, I'll pass. It's yeah, I, I love the mission of it and I'm, you know, how we frame it or how it goes down. I think Sal made an interesting point about maybe it shouldn't be connected to the board because then it has to be penned in, but you know, I think it could be broad enough. We could make it that we're concerned about the community and how to draw people in. And I think it'll generate the same conversations, I think. So, yeah. Okay. Nancy? Uh, I, I do agree with Andrew and um, that I think there should be the focus of how to, how to bring more families to us. And I, and I, I would say that I think it, it will be a more productive conversation if we think um, strategically about who to invite. Some of the people we might invite might not be from our five towns, but they might be experts on some of these breakout topics. Um, I think we certainly want to invite so, plenty of, there are certainly plenty of experts in our towns as well. So I'd be excited about helping to think through what that would look like. And, and I think it is, it addresses the, an obstacle to our school district that is huge and is influencing so many other things uh, about the decisions that, that the school district is making. Thank you. Okay, um, Kim. Uh, I'm not sure I have too much to add. I think that, um, again, I I'm of the mind build it and they will come kind of mentality in terms of creating um, a place where people want to be and what does that look like? Um, you know, and having a school that, having a, di having a district, having schools where people want to come and move and have their kids be educated is certainly way, way up there on the list. I, I think in, I think working with the various towns and finding out what the needs are, you know, are there enough elderly services in Moncton? Um, I don't know, you know, I, I think we do a pretty good job here in New Haven, but you know, I, I know there's a lot of people and through this whole COVID thing um, have seen, we've got a lot more elderly people here that are looking for connection than families with kids and and that's been the, our, the biggest challenge for me is is trying to help um, some of these elderly people not feel so isolated so so i i i just think that um you know w without making it too big and broad i think people kind of know what the issues are um, and we can ask we can ask the leaders in each of the towns um, to participate in this, you know, conversation and make it something that is uh, is going to address because everybody's got that on their mind. I think if it gets too big in terms of how do we attract new families to the area, you know, a lot of the, I know our select board is dealing with a lot of issues that are just facing the town right now, and and that that's um, if we can solve those issues, I think we can help attract families. Um, so it's, it's sort of like a cart and a horse thing. Um, hey Liz, I see that, I think you're here with us. I don't know if you have anything to add. 
Um, hi. They, hi. I, <laughs> hi. They, I, I like everything I've heard, and I particularly think that it will be a great way to connect with people that don't have students in the buildings. And probably thinking about our facilities as a five town community and what the greatest needs are and what needs aren't being met and what they could be. I, I think that's a pretty direct connection. It would be really helpful to think about that, think about facilities in that down the road after the first meeting, maybe think about community needs and what our facilities could do to help with that. Thank you. Okay, um, and John, did you want to add anything? Uh, I was, I was just thinking. Oh, I don't know if I'm, I'm frozen. Um, I was just thinking. I wonder what Sue's comment would be hearing our conversation, and I was thinking that she, um. Sue always has a way to, to make us think a little more than where we are. And so I was just thinking to myself, I wonder what Sue would be presenting to us if she heard our conversation. Yeah, one thing I was wondering about, can you all hear me okay? Okay, one thing I was wondering about is, or, or not, not wondering, uh, that occurred to me is that I see, you know, we had a lot of folks really interested in these bigger conversations at our fall engagement. And so um, that energy you know, is probably still out there, buried under some pandemic stress, but it's there. And I think, I think I'm reminded that we have evidence there that people think this is really valuable to, to talk about. So um, that helps me. And the reference to Sue kind of helped remind me of that. Um, Rob, I don't know, I didn't call on you again. I don't know if you had anything else to add. Okay, so Patrick, um, we've gone around around a little bit, but as the leader of this particular ship. Um, what do you feel like good next steps would be for this group? I, do you think, um, yeah, what, what are your reactions at this point? The topic invite some people and the start to talk. <clears throat> it almost doesn't matter what the topic is um, because we could pick from a myriad of topics that are all relevant and all things that we can come together on. For me, getting started is the important thing. Um, and the together, I think, I think we will, we will grow together by trying to tackle something that impacts us all in a variety of ways, whether that's bringing families together or more specifically internet connectivity or how do we help seniors and what's the relationship between our facilities and how they might help resolve that. Um, it, it could be almost anything, um, but let's pick something and get started. And, and it will evolve from there. Whatever we think we're going to achieve on the outset will likely evolve um, in a really sort of genuine and organic way, and that's fine. Um, but we won't have an opportunity for that to happen if we don't get something off the ground. And is there a particular, from your planning purposes, a particular time frame that you think is most helpful? Three years ago would be great. Honestly, that's, that's the real challenge from my perspective. Um, unless we're talking about something small and insignificant, I don't think we're going to make big change that's going to have a significant impact in the timeline that we need it to, um, to save us from having to make some really hard decisions. So knowing, like feeling that, I guess I can't say I know that, but I feel that, I believe that. Um, I don't know, timeline becomes less relevant when I'm starting from that sort of negative place, I guess. But sooner rather than later to have any chance at salvaging um, 
some sort of change in a, in a timely fashion that really has an impact. But I also think the sooner we start working together towards something, the stronger the relationships are that we're going to build and the better positioned we will be to weather the storm that is on the horizon here, even if we can't make the change we want in the time that we want to make it. But Patrick, in terms of all the other things you're dealing with, um, do you have time to, um, to uh, attend to this whole thing we've been talking about um, after June 16th? Or um, certainly not before, I imagine, but are you gonna get some time off with your family this summer? Because that seems kind of important too. And um, so are you, are, is August, early August a better time to aim for, to, ha to convene a conversation? Um, I think I'll, I'll just make anything work. As I look at the next, 36 months, um, it looks pretty straight out when I think about the kinds of change that are happening. It's just gonna be a perpetual from one, one pod into the next as we sort of evolve and enroll with the changes that are on the horizon. Um, so I don't, I don't see a window that's gonna be significantly less intense anytime soon. So I think we need to just dive right in. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait for a clearing to get this started. I'd start sooner rather than later. I'm wondering what people think about um, uh, mulling on invite list and um, kind of a, an outline between now and our next meeting. I think we have a call. I have a call. Um, can't hear me? Now I can. Okay. So Patrick and John and I have a call, I think, next Thursday. Um, but I wonder if between now and our next meeting, we could all be thinking of invite list and sort of a rough sketch of outline of what this could look like. And we can also, in the meantime, run this by Sue and maybe invite her to our next meeting. Did people hear that? Okay, so uh, that would be two weeks from now. And, you know, maybe that means in a month or so we can actually do this. Does that feel reasonable? Okay. All right, so I think I'm a, I think that's the end of our agenda. Um, and it looks like I keep having audio issues. Go ahead, Nancy. You, you may have talked about this before I came on, but I just want to make sure that everyone knows that the interviews article is now on the Addison Independent website with photographs. And um, Christopher Ross was a hero. He and I worked on it together back and forth um, till about 9.30 last night. And then first thing this morning, he was thinking about photographs. So he's just been amazing. And um, so I hope you get to see it. And I, and I, I haven't shared it on Facebook. Um, oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have shared it on Facebook. I haven't shared it on Front Porch Forum. <laughs> and um, Krista, if you, I think you did, yes? Yes? Not yet, not yet. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if someone besides me could share it on the Starksboro Front Porch Forum. And we could put it out on the MAUSD Front Porch Forum and Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, and that would be website. If, if, you, if, you, if that's something you're inclined to do, I think, um, I don't know, I, 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 it was definitely a team effort to put it together. Um, Krista and Sally and, and Mary and um, Elizabeth Marr. And um, I, think, I think the stories are compelling. It's, all, it's it, after the introduction, um, which is really the only thing I wrote, the rest of it is, um, 
people's ex people their really direct quotes from the people we interviewed. So finally, <laughs> it happened. There's a lot there. I started reading it. I haven't made it all the way through yet. There's yeah, it's kind of long. Yeah, yeah same here. I, it, that's quite a that's quite a um, collection of work. So thank you to everybody that that got involved. I'll put it on the front porch forum here in New Haven. I already shared it to our community Facebook page. So Great, they have it. And Patrick, if you would put it out through the through the MAUSD on front porch forum, that would be great too. Yep. But read it first, maybe. <laughs> so far, Thank so you. good. Thank you for mentioning that, Nancy. I didn't get to that at the beginning, but I really appreciate all of your work shepherding that project. It's pretty awesome. Well, Christopher Ross, he's absolutely my hero. He, he worked on his own time. He, the paper was having some issues because of these troubling times. And, um, and when he realized that it, was, it wasn't happening, he got right on it and um, he made it happen. Okay, so I think we have a pretty good plan um, for our next meeting. Uh, if anyone has anything else they wanna share before we close, I'll give you a minute to do so. I had one last thing I wanted to share with the group. It's a, um, a paper that was written by Dave Melnick from the Family Center um, in Williston. It's an outpatient mental health clinic. And it talks about school and ending well, planning well, and beginning well, reestablishing the school as community. And I just thought this group in particular, I think I sent it to you in an email, Krista, a while ago. But I'll put the link here in the chat. It's a really interesting article that gives some really great um, Great introspective in talking about dealing with COVID-19 and the trauma that some kids have experienced because of it and the differences that that makes for them. So anyway, I, again, I just thought it was an interesting article for this group in particular. Thanks for the link. Thank you. I had one quick thing. I had an idea with the postcards. I've got quite a few postcards still, and I had this thought about turning the um, turning the tables over to the seniors in town to see if they wanted to write to students at either the elementary school, the middle school, or the high school as just a generic, um, we know this has been a hard year for you. We hope that you have a good summer and are looking forward to next year. And because like I said earlier, we, I've got a lot more seniors in town that were hoping to get postcards that didn't. So I think what I want to do is go out to them and ask them if they would just, if they would like to write a postcard to a student and I'll just drop them off at the school and they could either do elementary level, middle school level or high school level and I'll just get them I'll just get them to the um to the school and the school can share them however they decide they might want to share them. Um I wonder I wonder about seniors to seniors. Yeah, that's a nice idea too. Senior citizens to graduating seniors. Oh, love that. Yeah, that's a great idea. I've got a teacher. Um, I've got a teacher in town that's working with some seniors. Maybe I'll talk with her about that. <laughs> yeah, but but it's just another way. Another way to um, you know make some connections in town, and and I've got postcards. I've got more if you guys need any and would like some. That streamlines the logistics as well because there'd be one point person to drop off all of the postcards to seniors um, trying to get those distributed. So, and we could even help mail those out from the school. That's great. I don't know if anybody else has those things that just make you kind of get choked up during these crazy times, but that's one. <laughs> seniors to seniors. I'm a <laughs> um, okay, so I guess um, I'll just pause for, well, anybody else have anything before we go to public comment? Okay, and I don't think we have any visitors. So, um, so before we formally adjourn, I just want to say thank you again to everyone. It's late, it's hot, it's summery. Um, I just really appreciate you guys keep showing up. So thank you very much. I'm 
it's great collaboration and, and conversation. Um, and I'll follow up with a link to everyone for the um, articles that were in the paper or the interviews that went into the paper. Please send me again, just to recap, please send me your invite ideas and any other thoughts you have on this um, community conversation. And, um, we'll meet again and, and, and flesh out the details. So if one of the board members wouldn't mind um, making a motion to adjourn, I would appreciate it. I motion to adjourn. Okay, Andrew, and a second. Rob, second. Rob, okay. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Aye, all right. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. Have a great night. Thanks, Krista. Bye. Bye.